Or shy. Or shy. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is William Reed. I am uh, the executive director of the German American Chamber of Commerce Colorado chapter. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, we'll be uh, meeting with uh, local business owners here in Colorado who are all members of the GACC CO. Um, and we are going to be learning about their experiences in terms of COVID-19 and what it means for their businesses, um, their employees, um, what uh, successes they've um, encountered, what issues they've encountered and how they've been addressing them. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists um, who will then say a little bit about themselves in a moment. Uh, we have Mike Black with Page Black, Bruce Early with Creative Strategies Group, Cesare Grossfeld with Pierogi's Factory, and then Alessandra Hines with Crazy Concepts LLC. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that you can see, actually see these wonderful people. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, Mike, actually, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Mike Black. I'm the, uh, what, am, what is my exact title? Managing Partner and CEO of Page Black. We are an integrated marketing firm. And so why, we're in the chamber partly because I have a love of Germany. I studied German and in college, and I used to speak decent German. Now I'll switch to Chinese on accident and never go back. But I, <laughs> so I apologize. But I do understand half of what you say when you switch to German. Great. Um, yeah. Nice. There you go. Bruce. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Bruce Early. I own a experiential marketing agency called Creative Strategies Group. We're in our 25th year. Um, I have a team of about six people that I work with. Uh, our connection with the German American Chamber is for the last uh, four or five years, we have uh, uh, developed and managed the um, sponsorship program as well as the uh, marketing campaign for the Denver Chris Kindle Market. Uh, my client list has been ravaged by uh, everything uh, because we work primarily with major festivals and events. So beginning with the Denver Auto Show, which has already been canceled from April and is possibly going into, into um, August to um, the Lovett Pavilion, a concert pavilion, which has now moved the start of their season from mid-May into mid uh, July. So it's uh, a very interesting world that I live in right now, uh, being in the festival and events industry. And I look forward to sharing some of our thoughts with you. Thanks, Bruce. I'm Cesari. Good morning, everyone. My name is Cesari Grossfeld. I was born and raised in Poland. I came to United States 2005, uh, all the time in Colorado. Uh, I'm the founder of Pierogi's Factory. Uh, I have a one uh, co I have a business partner in this moment. Also, six months ago, I opened a new restaurant called Mac and Cheesery. I uh, specialize in customized bowls in Mac and Cheese. Also, I uh, produce, I'm only one producer of pierogies in Colorado. Uh, we sell them in retail stores like Whole Foods, Vitamin Courage, Marzik, and also food service, which is stopped in this moment for uh, several restaurants in Colorado. Thank you. Thank you. And Alessandra. Hi, I'm Alessandra Hines with Crazy Concepts, doing business as Bavaria. Um, I'm born and raised in Nuremberg, Germany. That is my hometown. Um, German is my first language. And um, yeah, came back here to go to school. Um, I'm an army brat. So that has a lot to do with um, my connection to Germany as well. Uh, my business, Crazy Concept, first started out as working with companies and businesses to do their logoed work on their t-shirts. Um, I worked in the gaming industry in the casinos up in Blackhawk and Central City for many years and worked very closely with their marketing departments and did a lot of um, uh, retail items for a lot of the casinos and their gift shops and whatnot. And it kind of evolved into the festivals, just like Bruce to where I've always done the festivals. I've always had my um, regular clientele that goes up to Sturgis every year. And my big event was Buffalo Bill Days in Golden. That's always the last solid weekend in July. And I've pro progressed through importing and exporting dirndls and lederhosen. And I'm still making the t-shirts for breweries here locally and um, custom items as well for breweries. Um, and I also make the dirndls here in Colorado I fly back to Germany it's a good excuse to go home and to get fabric and I make the dirndls actually right here in Lakewood 
and a lot of them I bring back as well. So I import export a lot of the German items. So my business has kind of evolved into a very niche um, uh, German type themed business, but I still do work with a lot of small businesses as far as helping them with their uniforms um, and also with um, uh, uh, marketing articles as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, for everyone on the call, uh, I think it's pretty clear that all of these folks, um, not only are they local, but they're also very involved in businesses that work with people. Um, and having access to people is a little bit difficult right now, as you can imagine. Um, so I'm excited to ask um, my own questions to these fine folks. But um, for those of you uh, who are joining us for the first time, um, if you have a question for any of our panelists, um, there is a chat bar at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can hit uh, that little chat button. It looks like it's from a comic strip and you can enter your questions. Um, and I will address those questions to our panelists um, at the uh, near the end of the session. Um, so um, without further ado, we can just jump right in. Um, I would love to just hear, um, obviously we're um, a few weeks into a stay at home order right now. Um, would love to uh, hear what that means for your business. What, uh, what happened immediately and where are you at right now? Um, could we start with Mike? Oh, and I think you're on mute. Sure. Yeah, I just started talking and realized that. Yeah, no, happy to start. So in some ways, it hasn't had a big impact on our business. And in some ways, it's been a huge impact. Um, so we, I, you know, this is the world headquarters of Page Black. And on the other side of that is my fireplace and living room behind my logo. So we're not a big company. We're a distributed company. So in that sense, it hasn't had a big change. Um, we were already working on Zoom. This isn't, none of this is new to me. On the other hand, a large, my job is to grow the business and a large part of the way I did that was having coffee with people who could refer us or potential clients. And that obviously has stopped um, in that sense. And then on the other hand, uh, on the other side, we've just seen a slowdown, like a lot of the deals that we were working on have paused. Um, and so there's some significant business loss there in that sense, we probably lost what would have been you know, half of our revenue is on pause at this point. So that's not a small change. Let me see if I missed any, did I get all your questions or did I anything else? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, uh, I'll follow up in, in just a moment. Um, but so like, let's move to Bruce. Yeah. Um, Bruce, obviously you um, work with the Chris Kindle market, which is at the end of the year um, and we're still forward there. <laughs> yeah, um, but so, so what does this look like for Creative Strategies Group? Well, uh, it's, it's pretty devastating right now because we just don't, uh, everything that we had planned on that was occurring during the months of, of March, April, May, and we, we go into a, uh, a tactical mode where we're uh, managing all of the sponsorship uh, relationships with all the events that we work with and our main season starts right around Memorial Day. So uh, we're, on a, we're on a pause with that along with everybody else to see if those are even gonna allow to be able to take place. Uh, most all of our clients uh, are on a, uh, and uh, with our recommendations, rather than saying we're canceling for 2020, we're postponing and everybody's scrambling to find later dates. We're working with them on doing that. We're spending a lot of time uh, in uh, communication. Um, uh, my background before this was in PR and there's a thing called a communication or a information vacuum. Uh, and if you don't fill that vacuum of uh, with with your uh, appropriate information to your clients, to your uh, uh, stakeholders, to um, your vendors, etc. Then they'll fill it with their own information, which is usually wrong. So we've been spending a lot of time communicating with sponsors, even if we don't have a lot of new information. We know that they know that we are keeping them apprised of what's going on. Um, I would say that we are probably uh, our income for uh, March, April, and May was went from. Uh, what we were expecting at 100% has probably gone down to around 25%. Um, and so um, we, and, and now that's not knowing during our, our, our more robust period of time in terms of income during the summer, how that's going to be impacted as well. So we're just kind of stumbling through it along with everybody else, trying to keep a positive attitude uh, and waiting to hear what the next um, announcement is about what we can do and what we can't do. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Bruce. Um, Cesari, um, you have a lot going on. You opened a new restaurant. Uh, what's what's going on with Pierogi's Factory? Yes, I mean, in my situation, you know, when I'm in the food business, our, when the restaurant was closed, you know, to dine in, my revenue for the restaurant dropped 75%, you know. 
So that was a very big impact. You know, I have around 20 employees when they're working. So that was the challenge, you know, because everybody has to get less hours. Uh, in this moment, um, so what I'll say, um, dining area, of course, is closed. But I have also food truck. So food truck gave me a little bit more revenue in this moment because I contact uh, several communities around the Denver metropolitan, which is I can go with my truck. People can order online. So this was this helped me a, a little bit. Um, another side, I have also manufacturing, and this one. So manufacturing from the retail side, it's a little bit better because more people go to the stores. So we sell, you know, like I said before, Whole, uh, whole Foods, Vitamin Cottage. Uh, we do this uh, private label for Marzik. So I see increase of the selling this product. On the other side, I sell also pierogi to the restaurants, which is it's zero in this moment. So this is really big impact of that one. Also, you know, I, sell, I have an online store when I sell pierogies uh, nationwide. And I increased this one at least 200%. So this at least gives me, the, yeah, That's great. It, yeah, at least that one. Um, I have in this moment, I have uh, the cheapest pierogi uh, ship overnight. I do, I only do priority overnight. I check all my competition. Everybody sells more than me. I mean, much higher my price than mine. So I'm happy about that one. But most revenue was from dining. So it was pretty pretty big hit, and I'm just in process right now to build a second restaurant. I mean, third one in this, the second Mac and Cheesery and the Littleton, and we're supposed to be open two months ago. Mm -hmm. In this moment, we just have a you know a conference yesterday with the landlord. We're gonna have to wait until it's finished because I don't want to really open. In, I don't want to get a grand opening in my place when nobody can come. You know? Right, right. So, um, be before moving on to Alessandra, a quick question. With, with the increase with online sales, um, I'm just curious, are those typically existing customers or have you been finding new customers um, through COVID-19? Um, what I did, do, um, I promote a little bit more by social media, especially Facebook. I hit the target only people who is interested about pierogies or vegan products because I have a lot of seven different flavors of vegan pierogies. From this one, I will say 90% is the new customers. Wow, great. New that's customers, fantastic. Yes. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And pretty much I ship pierogi from Alaska to Florida. Wow. And that's <laughs> always the order today. You have it at your house tomorrow morning. <laughs> I think I yep. need to make a call after this conference. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alessandra, uh, how, about, how about you? How is it affecting your business? Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a silver lining to everything. I'm, I'm in the festival business just like Bruce is. Um, I do stay very close to my clients and, you know, understand that their t-shirts, um, you know, to make them for the businesses and whatnot. Um, I think when we get out of this, marketing is going to be one of the big things that all these companies are going to have to go back to again. And then, you know, make light of um, what has happened. Um, you know, we can do the COVID beer, we can do like COVID t-shirts, we can, um, you know, make masks, which I sold out of, out of a Bavarian flag. Um, you know, all kinds of things that come out of it. So for me, what it does is it pushes me to do more online business and um, to get the word out there. Being so niche in, you know, making dirndls and whatnot, people are not able to go over there now, but they still want a little piece of it. Or they're like, hey, Sandra, I have... Um, something here that needs to be fixed, or could you find this for me? And what it does also, it allows for a lot of custom orders and um, you know things that are very unique. So for me in my business, it's, just, it's going more online, most definitely, and I'm communicating more with people, um, going online um, and doing YouTube videos and helping them to you know, make dirndls or to repair something or to come up with ideas for their you know, family and friends been fun um and actually that might be the perfect time to plug tonight we're having a virtual stammtisch uh for anyone who's interested in speaking german uh, maybe you can throw a dirndl on or some lederhosen and join uh at 6 p.m tonight um okay so <laughs> um so I'm, I'm curious uh what has been um the biggest challenge for each of um your organizations 
uh, coming into this. I know some of you probably moved to uh, working from home. Some of you don't have that option. So um, I'd really, if we could actually go in the same order, maybe starting with Mike, um, what, what has probably been the biggest challenge for, for you guys at Page Black? I think your mic might still be off. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to protect you guys from background noise. <laughs> so what I would say our biggest challenge has been is really shifting to helping our clients not panic. That some of them are fine and some of them are panicking and helping them kind of look at it. Bruce's point to communications, we did a webinar on crisis communications and it's so key. And some of our clients engaged in that and really used that material to build out a plan or hired us to build out a plan and some didn't. And I can totally tell the difference in which ones did and didn't. And the, I'm guessing they'll see it. Um, eventual impact on their business if they haven't already. The second challenge obviously is just scrambling to really it is, I mean, we're, we were already virtual, so we were able to pivot. We were doing webinars before the stay at home order hit. Um, and so we've done, I think eight webinars over the past four weeks and it's all different topics on helping companies do that. And it's really been scrambling. How can we get people connected with the right information? Um, and then just pay check protection plans and things like that, because obviously our revenue has been hit as well. Absolutely. Um, Bruce, how about uh, CSG, biggest challenge? Um, well, uh, fortunately, we have invested in IT for a long time. Uh, so uh, we are, not only do we have the servers back at the office, which are um, operating in a dark office right now, but we have the cloud-based. Uh, all of our staff uh, can uh, access remotely. We've had some issues with that based upon the strength of their own internet at their homes, but uh, several have laptops and others have uh, uh, virtual um, VPNs to be able to, to log into the office. We have access to most of the files on our server for, for most everyone, and if they can't get to it, um, I can get it over to them. So those are helping a lot. I think the, the, the biggest issue um, managing a team remotely is um, how do you keep everybody um, uh, engaged, involved, um, stay focused, that sort of thing. Um, so we have Tuesday mornings uh, uh, Zoom calls where um, we just are all, ch first we check in to make sure how everybody's doing in their homes. We have two of our staff that are now uh, at home teachers for their kids and that's not easy. I that's, that's my most stressed staff. Uh, is those that are trying to work, but now uh, and additional, uh, additionally uh, n n uh, navigate through this issue with um, teaching our kids. Um, I've got some staff members that are at home completely alone, and so they've got some of the isolation issues when you're not interacting with another person. So we're trying to check in on all of those personal things first, and then we get into the business side of things. And the biggest thing that I've got my staff doing is trying to think, strategically rather than tactically. What are the things that we can get done now because we're not working on other things because we can't, we're on a, on a pause. So what is the things that you can be working on for th things that normally you're gonna be doing in August, September, October? Let's get those queued up now because the one thing that we are anticipating, or hopefully anticipating, is that when the all clear is sounded, um, we will need to put a lot of stuff into a short period of time because we're going to have a contracted schedule of events. And I don't want to be working on strategic things at that time. I want to be working on just what needs to be done, the stuff that's on fire. So that's kind of how we're managing it right now. And uh, thank goodness for, for the, the PPP. It, it uh, is allowing us to continue to uh, manage the revenue losses and keep everybody fully employed. We have not done any layoffs. We haven't done any furloughs. We haven't done any uh, reductions in um, salary. We, ha we have stopped things like our uh, 401k contribution, some things like that, that, that aren't as urgent. You know, they're more long-term things and everybody understands that. So that's where we're at. Great. Thanks, Bruce. Um, and I do want to come back to the subject of PPP in just a moment um, and see how um, everyone is, is working with that, if they're applying for it or not. Um, but I do have a quick question for you, Bruce, um, regarding the VPN. Um, I know a lot of small businesses don't um, have access to something like that. Um, some might be using things like Google Drive. Um, but I, I'm just sort of curious if you happen to know, um, with your VPN, how did you get that set up? What is, what is that process like? Well, I've always, uh, I've, as, a, uh, as a marketing agency, and um, Michael uh, fully agree with this, uh, our, our, our inventory is all intellectual property. 
So it's all the, our knowledge base, our research, our, the reports that we've done, all that sort of thing. So since I started the agency, I've had an IT consultant, an outside IT consultant. We work with a company in, in Broomfield called uh, ISI, uh, Information Systems Integrators. And uh, they're our help desk. They buy our equipment. They keep us going and that sort of thing. So if our staff is having any problems right now, they don't call me, thank God. Uh, they, <laughs> they, 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 they call the help desk. And the help desk, they're, they're still working and they, they've been able to fix things. And there's one or two occasions where I need to actually go down to the office and perhaps reboot um, uh, Comcast or something like that. I can do that. Nobody's down at the office. Um, but uh, having that stuff in place beforehand was, has been a big deal for us. Uh, and actually, it's making me begin to think, do, how much do I need an office? I mean, honestly, after we go through this, when you think about what are your new normals, we're working pretty efficiently. Um, I think there's some loss of, of camaraderie and teamwork and that sort of thing because we're not together uh, enough, but maybe we go into more of a WeWork thing where we have space and we go and use it when we need it, but we don't need a full-time seven office with conference room and kitchen space after this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cesare, um, I imagine you have a bit of a different story. Uh, you're, I imagine, still working with uh, quite a few people on a daily basis. Yes, I'm, to be honest, I'm still keeping everybody, you know, employed, you know, a part of my business, just the biggest challenge is to keep them enough hours, you know, because, you know, and imagine I got six people on the day shift and now I have to drop to two or three. So that's the biggest challenge because, you know, it's not like a full time hours for everybody. Um, so that's my biggest challenge, you know, to make sure, you know, I get enough hours, but as soon as, you know, as soon as you know the virus, you know, the pandemic will be done, will be come back to normal. I hope so, it will be normal, you know, but we don't know about that yet. Another problem is um, sometimes I have problems to get the supplies, you know, from those big guys when I, big distributors, you know, and I produce more pierogies right now, retails. Sometimes um, I don't, for example, I don't have uh, flour, you know, what I'm using because the shortage, because they don't deliver or, and especially prices, some of the product price drop, uh, jumped 25%, which is I cannot change to my, you know, my guys. So this is the biggest challenge from my side, to be honest. Yeah. Um, have you, um, with, with your employees, are they, do they need like face masks right now? Um, how is that working? Yes. Yeah, so especially in the restaurant and the production, yes, you know, we took extra safety about that. So we got masks gloves we have a screen in the restaurant as well uh we have a thermometer so we're checking every day the managers they just check everybody if nobody got the fever because that's the first step to know something going on so that's uh extra step so far nobody from my employees gets sick or anything so finger crossed i hope to stay that <laughs> to the end yeah absolutely i mean alessandra um i think my biggest challenge is that so I, all of my employees are contracted. So when I do have a big order, I contract individuals to um, uh, work with me. So as far as having employees, I'm the only employee in that sense. Um, and I did not take advantage of the PPP just because um, uh, I'm okay. I think that there's other businesses out there that need the money more than I do. So I don't wanna like deplete it for something ridiculous on my end. When, you know, my internet sales are good and, and everything will be fine. I, you know, my heart goes out to these businesses. Of course, everyone that's on this panel as well, that, you know, the, the need is there more for other companies. So I did not take advantage of that. Um, but I think the other challenge is, is that um, being in the business of doing festivals a lot, that's my main income, Great American Beer Festival. Um, doing all of these outdoor activities. I mean, look at us, we're all social beings and not being able to go out there and to go into the park, listen to some live music, go look at the vendors and the artisans and those people to enjoy your time. Um, if everyone is familiar with like the, uh, the um, Oktoberfest in Breckenridge, which is huge in Vail every Sunday, they have the, um, the uh, uh, farmer's market up there. That, is all going to probably change within our future. How do they, how do they deal with that? Being of the social people that are out in the open all the time, 
it's no different than sports, you know, outdoor sports or going to sporting events or anything like that. So it, everything is going to kind of change. And um, that's the aspect of it that really hurts me because, um, you know, just like any restaurant or retail, um, retail is going to change. It's going to change the dynamic of a lot of the retail stores. People are already ordering a lot online. That's a perfect example is Victoria's Secret. They're shutting down stores uh, left and right because there's just no want for their product anymore. And they're, the need for brick and mortar stores is it's, it's kind of run its course a little bit, which this is just going to have another double effect on that as well. Um, but working from home and um, working and having an office like um, Bruce had mentioned as well is that it might be where businesses can save a lot of money that where you don't have to have a huge office that everybody does communicate and stays within a you know project plan to where they can accomplish everything that needs to be done not have to you know tootle into an office all the time, which is, you know, a positive and a negative as well. Because sometimes people are more efficient and can learn to do things from a home-based office instead of going into the office. Um, so, so you mentioned, um, so you mentioned PPP um, yes. and that you're not um, taking advantage of that um, because your, your organization doesn't necessarily need it. Um, I was wondering if anyone on the call um, has taken it. Um, Bruce, it sounds like uh, you were saying, thank goodness for PPP. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your experience um, in terms of applying for that and what that's been like? Well, let me first of all say this morning, the government announced that they're not taking any more PPP applications because the money has run out until Congress allocates more money for it. And now we have to deal with those idiots in Washington to fight over what is included in those funding requests. Um, I, uh, right when they started to talk about the CARE Act, I got an appointment, an online appointment with an, with an SBA consultant, which they have them all over the state. Um, and we did a phone call and she explained the different programs that, that were gonna be in place. Uh, she explained that the, uh, the uh, Emergency Funding Act is, is uh, or there's, a, there's an emergency fund, it, it's an acronym, I can't remember, I actually have it right here. The Disaster Loan Assistance uh, COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Application is done directly with the SBA, not through your bank. And I applied for that because there's a $10,000 forgivable portion of that loan. Uh, I then contacted my bank and, and frankly, businesses that were operating without having a banker were in trouble because no, most banks were not taking new customers. So I have a bank and fortunately it was a smaller community bank. Um, and that was better than being with like Wells Fargo or others that were, um, that just have so many customers and their system shut down. So I got my application in a week ago or two weeks ago, this coming Friday, tomorrow. So I got it in with what was needed, working with my banker. And he told me uh, uh, two weeks ago on Monday that he had got it submitted. And this past Monday, he uh, told me that it had been approved. Um, I haven't gotten a, dis uh, a distribution yet. I haven't signed the final paperwork yet. I'm waiting for that to come on through a DocuSign process. But every indication is that we, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the queue. It's been approved. So we basically are looking for those funds to hit before the next payroll, um, which we just covered this payroll through our existing operating funds. Um, and uh, that next one will be the beginning of May, and then that'll take us through May and June, and then we'll know a lot more by then. So it's been really important to do that, but uh, you, honestly, you cannot sleep at all on this stuff. You've got to, you, you can't, if in doubt, apply, if, you know, just get it out there. And we've also applied for some other grants. There's some Facebook grants that are out there. Um, we've applied for one through the city and county of Denver. Haven't heard anything on those. But the, the PPP is going to be the most critical one to keep the staff going. And everybody knows you've got to use that for it to be forgivable. You've got to use it directly for payroll, rent, or you can use it for interest payments. You can't use it for, for really any other purpose. And you're going to have to show them I've gotten a, a form that I need to submit to them at the end of two months, showing the documentation of that along with our payroll um, forms that we normally file with the government. Um, and, and Mike, it looked like you raised your hand as well. Um, so Bruce, just basically, let me echo everything he said. I'm in the exact <laughs> same position that he is, that I've got a preliminary or approval through my bank, and I'm just waiting to hear 
I'm waiting to sign the DocuSign thing. It sounds like we may both be at Citywide Bank um, because that's exactly <laughs> where I am. And I would just echo that I'm really grateful we moved away from a large bank to a smaller bank because I feel like we got much better service than the people that I know that were at a larger bank. Mm -hmm. um, and Cesari, uh, is this something you applied for as well? Yes, like exactly like Bruce and Mike, they said, you know, uh, the PPP is the most important in my position because, you know, with this uh, employees, but um, I'm in the bigger bank. I'm with Chase. Um, and about those, you know, all the grants, you know, this is my business partner. That's his, you know, part to do all this stuff. I only know that we apply for this. We didn't have any, uh, we haven't, of course, a number. We're waiting. You know, I talk with the banks. They just tell us we have to be patient, you know. So um, that's the biggest. We also got applied for the grant from the city of Whitridge because that's where the restaurant, they, uh, we didn't hear anything yet. So pretty much we apply whatever we can, but we have to wait. So there's any, there was no physically money came to our account or something like that. So we have to wait. So Cesari, if uh, your banker says you have to be patient, hopefully you can say that back to him when he's looking for loan payments. Yes, that's so, true. Oh, you know, Mr. Bank, that's how it works. You, 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 you <laughs> have to be patient. <laughs> you know that I'm, I'm, the thing is, whatever I spoke to the guy, this is my good friend. You know, he he's Polish and he's, um, if I remember correct, he's doing uh, loans for the businesses. You know, he's one of the guy for entire Colorado. He's my point of contact. So whatever happened, he always tell me so, but that's only he can tell me. I bet everybody will tell me the same, you know. Just <laughs> um, while we're on the subject of banking, um, we recently surveyed uh, members of the GACC. Um, one of the largest issues that uh, they're mentioning, it, it's coming up uh, again and again, is cash liquidity right now um, and just being able to get actual cash. Um, I was wondering if any of you might um, be experiencing anything like that. No, everybody's. So, I mean, so it, it comes down to, have you done good business planning? Do you have an operating line that you got ahead of time so that you can access that now? So when this started and they started shutting the world down, I pulled my line down and put it in my bank account to let me go. And they may call that line at some point, but you know, we'll figure that out when that happens. Gotcha. Same thing. We, we have uh, several different lines of credit. Um, some are uh, asset based, some are not. Um, they're just on my signature. So, um, uh, but we're, we were already using those. So it's not mm -hmm. like they were at zero. So we we're already using those. So right now we're managing how we pay those, uh, keep managing those without drawing from them. That's how we want to use the PPP is we don't want to use any of our other business lines of credit. Nice. In, my, in my case, um, I'm in the process to build the Finnish second restaurant and those two restaurants, the, the, this one in Littleton and one we opened in Denver uh, in Whitridge six months ago that was building from scratch. So unfortunately for me, I'm a little bit back with line of credit. I cannot use them anymore. But uh, in this moment during, because the retail wholesale works better and plus online, I'm able to pay my employees in the bills and I have some relief from one of the landlord in Whitridge. So I try to just operate what I make right now just to cover the employees, the food. So that's, that's pretty okay. And we did a couple other things, William. We, um, uh, I uh, contacted uh, uh, the, com uh, we have a, uh, a couple of company vehicles and uh, both of those uh, lenders provided a three month uh, pause on payments. They just extended them three months longer. So just to keep cash flow uh, mm -hmm. in, in a management form. So uh, in a manageable form. So we've anything that we could put a pause on because we didn't know what was going on. Uh, it doesn't make it go away. Um, but uh, we've done that. And plus our, our landlord had a, uh, an annual uh, fee that they charge us based upon the maintenance that they did that, that our uh, rent didn't cover. I told him I, 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 it, was, it was pretty significant this year. Um, so I said, I can't do that right now. I'll, do, I'll split it over four months beginning in July. Um, so those discussions, if you're dealing with any sort of lender or, or anybody who is not providing you with a certain degree of empathy, uh, then as soon as this is over, get rid of them. <laughs> uh, because 
because they are, they are, they, it, empathy is the number one thing that we can show to our clients and to our customers and to our suppliers and to our staff. And if you've got people who are, who are, who are acting like the, you know, the bill must be paid, then honestly, um, do what you have to do with them for now because you've signed contracts, but get rid of them the moment that you can. Yeah. Here, here. Well, and I guess that was going to be my question is um, how um, agreeable have people been? I, I feel like um, you hear a lot of stories about, um, I don't know, landowners saying rent is due. But um, on the other hand, you hear all of these really wonderful stories um, about um, people really going the extra mile and, and really, really helping each other out. Um, so I'm just curious what your personal experiences have been like with that. Mine has been fine. Go on. <laughs> I'll speak to that. Um, I, I feel it's been um, very genuine. Uh, my bank actually reached out to me. I'm with a small bank as well. Reached out to me and said, we noticed that you didn't apply for the PPP. Is everything okay? Um, is there something that we can do? Um, and I'm like, I'm good, you know, cause I had somewhat of an inkling of kind of what was going to happen. And I just kind of laid low and, you know, moved monies around to where I can survive. And so I don't know how it just kind of happened that way, but I can honestly say that as far as the bank is concerned, they were fantastic. They were absolutely wonderful. They actually reached out to me. Which Who's your bank? Belco <laughs> credit union. Okay. I, yeah. I've not heard of a bank that has that capacity. Our bank, they, they're swamped. They but, are yeah. fantastic. And, um, you know, they've just always been wonderful. And they have business accounts as well, even though it's a credit union. So, um, mm -hmm. and I choose to work with local banks and that type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, First Bank is another one. We were in the process of refinancing. Uh, I was on the process of refinancing my house. And they reached out and they said, okay, considering this is a situation what's happening, we're going to take your numbers from previously and let's let this kind of float over and then let's reconvene after, you know, the COVID, this whole epidemic is over with. Mm -hmm. um, so they were fantastic. Um, so I can really say uh, um, the neighborhood has been fantastic. You know, we have people that have like elders around the area and everybody puts a sign in their window and says, you know, do you need anything? I call everybody around my friends that I know that they have, um, uh, you know, older, parents, older people, do you need anything? I'm, we're doing a run to Costco and, you know, please, do you need any? And I, and I, even to my contracted staff, I call them every day. They contact me. I'm like, do you need to do something? Do you want to come over? Um, you know, I can put you to work. Do you need something done? And they're like, no, we're good. You know, you helped us out in that point and we're good to go. So it's, it's, I see a lot of wonderful things happening out of all of this and everybody's hanging together. Uh, my contractor, she um, came over and, and I put a bunch of fabric outside and she made all the masks for um, her son. He is works in the hospital security. And so she made all the masks and I gave her all kinds of, you know, extra because I make clothes here and I just put everything outside. We disinfected everything and then she went and made masks for everybody and, you know, we doing it that way as well. So that's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, Cesare, um, what, what has it been like for you working, um, like with your distributors, for example? Um, I, I know you brought them up. Um, I'm just curious, how, how is that sort of chain of command? Is it business as usual? I mean, from the, like I said, from the wholesale standpoint, it's better. You know, the, you know, we got more orders, like I said before, and also the great things with all the distributors, what I have, you know, was 30 days net pay right so i have to wait in this moment we were negotiated to pay in two weeks which is you know so we got more faster cash flow you know so this is very good uh help uh, on this side you know with the landlords i have a landlord from the production he was pretty cool actually he told me uh, i have a meeting with him um three days ago and he said you know don't worry i know it's hard for everybody just if you can pay me Whatever you can, just cover my bills. I don't want you make my. I don't want to make money on you. Just I need to cover because I have a big freezers, you know, walk-in freezers, coolers. So that was very helpful. Um, like I said, every we everybody on the same, you know, we on the same boat, right? So it's everybody understand the situation. Uh, my employees, like I said, um, landlords, 
just we have to go through, you know, all these hard times. Um, I, I do have a uh, question that's actually particularly for you, Cesare. Um, I know a lot of restaurants um, are uh, maybe delivering food for the first time um, or doing takeout orders in a new way. Uh, I'm curious, what has your experience been with um, apps like DoorDash and Grubhub? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? So before the, the, the situation, the pandemic, I used, to, I used to use only Grubhub. That was only one my uh, stream of the delivery, you know, the source of income. In this moment, of course, I signed for all of them, which is Postmates, Uber Eats, um, DoorDash. And it helps a lot. I mean, help, I'm sorry, it helps a little bit, not a, a lot like I thought, because in Whitridge area, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of apartments, you know, there's more houses, you know, there's not like Denver area where, um, you know, there's more people per square mile, right? So it helps, but it's not like, a, I cannot, I'm open for the takeout, delivery, maybe jump 40, 50% what I made. So I expect more, but also I signed for the easy cater, which is we deliver, I, I have a few deliveries to the, hospitals you know some departments they order the food so that was pretty cool because that's for a group of 40 to 100 people so we got so far four of them in last two weeks which is good that was a good stream of revenue as well and that's a great thing also with those usually they pay once a month now we get got weekly so our cash flow is better so then i can afford money to pay the employees Cesare, so when, when, when you got the hospital order, did that come from the hospital or did someone do that as a gift to the people working at the hospital? So some, so what I understood because that's order came from Easy Cater, right? So that was the one person, I think the, it wasn't like a private person. There was just one person responsible for many, you know, branches in the hospital. That was the, that's what it came from this person. Uh, let me just give you one suggestion. I've got two two kids in uh, on the front line. One's a emergency room PAA up in Washington State, um, mm -hmm. and I've got another one who's an emergency physician here at Denver Health. Uh, so they're right in the middle of it. Um, each week, my wife and I have been ordering food from different restaurants that they've recommended and sending it to the emergency room uh, just to feed them as a thank you. Um, and it's been pizzas or it's been subs or it's been any number of things. Yes. Uh, it's a great thing that we as businesses can do or we as individuals can do because uh, not only is it saying to the frontline workers, we value what you're doing and you don't have to know anybody there. Um, you can have it just sent to the emergency department of Denver Health and look up the address on Bannock. Um, uh, but, you can, but it says a great deal to them. It feeds them, which is good. And it's also supporting um, small businesses. And then we've been doing big tips uh, as well, because the tip, you know, this is the time to be tipping 25% or more. Yeah, that's unusual. And, and, and so, it's, so it's a great thing for all, that anybody can do. Um, and even if you're doing, sending it to the local fire department or to the police department or uh, whatever, that, that's one thing I, I'd suggest that we all try to do. I think, and I, I know because I hear the feedback from my, my sons, the uh, emergency staff really appreciate it. Right. And yes. And if frankly, you, you, you could turn that into a sales effort that it could provide some, you know, you might donate a portion yourself, but you could at least cover your costs and cover your employee costs. And if you put that out there, certain companies would probably be willing or people would be willing to sponsor that and that'll help you feed them. And that would be, uh, everybody wins. Great idea. Right. So now um, I just, next week, uh, they reached me. I'm the customer of the uh, fi a country financial and they offer me to $750. They want to buy the produce for a product from me, pierogies, to donate to one of two hospitals. So what I'm going, so for my side, this is great, you know, string revenue for me, but what I do, I always double up the order like that. So whatever this one, I can offer extra more on my side as well. So this mm -hmm. is also what I'm trying to do with all this, you know, well, if you need a hospital idea and a person, I can tell you who to go to at Denver Health. Okay, I would love to know. I would love to. Know. Right. Um, so, obviously, there's a lot of like re actually really great things going on, which is really great to hear. Um, Bruce, earlier on in the conversation, you mentioned that um, you're starting to question: Do you actually need your permanent office space? Um, 
my question for all of you is, do you see any um, more permanent changes coming out of this for your business? Uh, maybe start with Mel, uh, Mike. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, part of it is driven by this and part of it was a shift that we were already making. I previously, my business was really driven by networking and coffee. I would meet with people that would generate a referral and then I would get business out of that. And then now I'm shifting to much more of an online. We're doing webinars. That isn't going to slow down. That's going to continue. I have asthma. So whatever, when the world goes live, I may not be going out back in the world together with them. So I need to figure out how do I make my, move my business forward. And the other piece for me, well, no, that was more your last question. Um, that, that was my answer. Yeah. I've got another an answer when you get to later. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else, any uh, permanent changes that you see coming? I, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of permanent changes. I see with um, uh, other individuals that have businesses that are booming because of this, because um, knowledge management, um, digitalizing the world to where um, dealing with reinsurance companies that they all now have to work from home and it's actually cheaper for them. They don't have to drive. They don't have to pay for gas. They don't have to, uh, you know, use public transportation. They don't have to have the office space. So the, a lot of the clients, uh, friends of client, the clients of friends, um, they say that, yeah, this is the new normal. This is working from home or having us, you know, a corner of the house, uh, to, be able to work from home, um, hiring a nanny or a babysitter to come to the house and take care of the kids because it's actually better that way to do it that way because then everybody can do their work more efficiently. So I see a huge shift to that. Um, just like a, a law firm, uh, an attorney, he was the city attorney of, of Lakewood at one point in time, and he's put everything online. He's, he has everything that he needs, all of his knowledge, all of his, um, uh, information that he needs to look back on. It's all online. It's all in a knowledge management platform and he can do everything from home. And so can his staff and it's great. Um, Cesare, how about you? I, I mean, for example, with deliveries, do you think um, you'll have more of an emphasis on that now um, or online orders? So online orders, definitely, you know, I'm going to focus more on this site, especially, you know, uh, with this rates, what I can ship the, my product to the customers. I have an entire country, you know, I have a mm -hmm. kind of idea what I would like to do, but also, what I learned um, from all this situation, and actually, I didn't see it until all this stif st stuff happened. I got last several years, you know, in my business, people ask me, when are you going to open in a restaurant in Aurora? Or I have many customers from Colorado Springs, you name it, Thornton, you know, a lot of different part of the town. But always the problem is, the cost bill of the restaurant is huge. Even now, it's higher and higher. And I know exactly when I build those two restaurants from scratch, it's, I don't know, I'm not planning to do anything like that in the future. I mean, close future. But what I decided, I'm going to open a few ghost kitchens, which is, it's going to be open just for delivery through GrabHub. Of course, all those, you know, delivery companies and take out which is the, the, the best part of that one because the front cost, the upfront cost is very minimal because I know there is the kitchens everywhere like commissary kitchens, you know, or the place when I don't need front store. It's gonna be, only what I need for my pierogies is hood with a griddle, stove, and few coolers. And mm -hmm. I just need to get access to the internet. So what are we planning to do in this moment uh, when I think everything will be done, we are looking places in Aurora and in uh, Colorado Springs where we can just, you know, it's gonna, I need, I'm not gonna need front people. So I'm assuming for ship, I need only two kitchen, you know, two people in the kitchen. And I think a lot of people, they gonna order now online, you know, like through delivery companies or they just gonna take out. You know, I know this, of course it will be, People are going to come back to the restaurants, but I think in my side, I don't risk that much money 
in this moment because you know the moment to build a new restaurant and just you know people gonna pick it up and eat home you know so this is actually the good part what i can say was from all this situation that with the minimum cost i can open more my locations to just get my name colorado still is not the place when a lot of people know pierogies if i'll be on the east coast or like chicago right. new york <laughs> pennsylvania i'll be probably five times bigger than right now but yeah. that's gonna build awareness about the product so i'm i'm looking forward to for this in this in the future to open more ghost kitchens excellent excellent that's also um, to say, uh, to feed off of that, Cesare, is also to possibly, you know, even more food trucks. I have a friend of mine who had a food truck for sale for two years. No one wanted it. Now, all of a sudden, I said, why don't you lease it out? And she's like, oh, my God, that's a brilliant idea. And that restaurant is actually cooking everything in their restaurant and then keeping it warm in the food truck. And it's like a to-go thing. And it really works. And they just bought their second one. And, um, you know, sitting outside of uh, a King Supers area and whatnot to where they have one big main kitchen and they just have storefronts, either a drive through or a takeaway and, um, you know, or online pickup, you know, no touch online pickup. Food truck, yes, you're right. You know, I'm doing food truck right now four years. I was chosen top 10 food trucks in Colorado last two years by Westward Magazine. I remember mm -hmm. the beginning. I have to. I took n every event when you know mm -hmm. what I can get. In this moment, mm -hmm. I have people contact me what events if I want to be there. Now I can choose if this is profitable for me or not. You know, so definitely food truck. My vision is I really would like to see Pierogi's factory. I can make this chain first in Colorado even farther because there's so many Polish descendants in east side but you know food truck is great you know source of revenue mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep it one probably right now but you know that was the great start for me after the farmers awesome. food truck was right. a really great start for me to be honest yeah i gotta tell you you're making me really hungry i just <laughs> you know that. here here <laughs> yeah we're coming yeah. up on 11. we have Almost to make a, lunch. we have to make a next webinar in my restaurant you know now right. there you go <laughs> so we can you know, taste lesson. there. So good, yes. Um, so I do want to be cognizant of everyone's time. We have about five minutes left. Um, I, I've learned a lot today from all of you. Um, I would love if we could use the last question um, to really discuss um, any sort of tips and tricks that you have for other businesses or maybe silver linings that are coming out of this, um, signs of optimism um, for your business or other businesses. Um, if, if any of you would like to touch on that. I t I'll touch on that. Um, I feel the fact that reach out, reach out to your community because this is this and uh, epidemic affects everybody obviously is as, as we're all sitting here on the panel, everyone differently. Um, just reach out, you know, see where there is help to be done. Um, and to just ask people, Hey, how you doing? How are things going? You know, this is all going to pass. It probably won't be the same as before. Your restaurant, we might have to wear gloves or wear masks all the time, but to be tolerant and to be grateful that, you know, we all come out of this and to be very, um, uh, you know, looking forward to let's learn from this. Let's make sure that, you know, we take care of each other and, you know, to be humble and everything that's going on. And, you know, there is a silver lining to all of this, that it's all going to be okay, and that we're all in this together, and we're all gonna push through this together as a planet, globally. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that's really interesting about all of this is there's less driving going on, there's less shootings, there are less, um, uh, you know, weird things going on that in our society that have all dropped off. And I'd love to see the numbers of, uh, you know, how our atmosphere is, 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 is building off of this, that we don't need to drive as much, that we, um, you know, use this time as to see what happens for a better future. Absolutely. I'll add, um, so if you think about the process of what we're going through the last 
month has really been almost a panic kind of scramble to get or things in order, get your loans, get yourself stable. The next month or whatever this period of time is going to be, is going to be kind of a marathon of how do we get through this? People are tired of hearing about COVID-19, but they have to hear about COVID-19. So how do you support your customers or the people around you through that? Then through the relaunch, the world's going to change. So how do you want to position your business throughout that? We're, you know, and if you're not marketing, I mean, as a marketing company, obviously I think this is important, but I really mean this, that if you're not marketing now towards that or thinking about how you're going to market in that environment, you're missing the boat. The people that are thinking about their sales and marketing now about what, when, how am I going to sell during this marathon endurance phase? How am I going to market and sell? I don't plan on selling. We have sold a couple projects, but I plan on supporting my customers and my network. Then as the relaunch happens, how are you going to do it then? You're going to be late because there are people out there that are planning. So you should start that now. Yep. I'll, 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 I'll piggyback on that, Mike. Um, I, I distinctly remember the companies that ceased all marketing in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, lost market share. One uh, shining example was Ford did not. And Ford picked up like 12 percentage points of market share because they kept on marketing during that period of time. And so um, my wife found a, a great saying back in 2008, which I've pulled back out and it says, when the winds of change begin to blow, build a windmill, not a shelter. Uh, meaning that you are trying to tap into those winds of change. Um, and I think businesses that are looking at that, I mean, let's face it, everybody who's listening to this right now and all of us who are participating, uh, we're entrepreneurs. So we generally, you have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur. Um, sure. Otherwise, you're not going to do that. And so um, uh, one of the other uh, slogans that, that we are using around my house uh, is be a warrior, not a warrior. Um, so we can sit there and, and wring our hands and wonder what the hell is going to happen because we don't know. We, we just don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'll do if they say no public events at all until 2021. I, I don't know what that looks like, but I'm not going to worry about it because I have no control over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to be a warrior and I'm going to try to uh, pivot as well as I can and find as many different avenues as I can to, to keep my business going, to keep my team employed um, and uh, to move forward. And uh, out of all of these things, out of all of these tragedies uh, the, the, and circumstances, there is opportunity in there if we can identify what that is and move towards that. Absolutely. And I will say on the enjoy the quality time of your family as the. Absolutely. Well said. Yes. yes. Uh, one. And that that is one thing that one of my contractors had said to me too. Um, she even said she's like, you know what, I, I'm good. I'm, I, this is time that I will never, ever have with my children ever again. This is time to actually really see, um, you know, there are some of, of the individuals that I know that, you know, complain about the fact, oh my goodness, I have to teach and do all this stuff. I said, but look, think of it from a point of view of, you know, you're never going to have this again. This is a time where um, you can reconnect with family and friends. I've reconnected with from people that I haven't seen or, you know, regularly spoken to on a weekly happy hour Zoom with the family that covers five different continents. So it's, it's just very, it's very nice and it's very cool. Just enjoy this time, um, read a book, do those things that you've never been able to do. Uh, this, this past Sunday on Easter, uh, my family, um, my dad has five brothers and sisters, so you can only imagine the number of uncles and aunts and cousins and everyone involved. Uh, we haven't probably been in the same room in probably since I was 10 years old. Uh, and this past Sunday, we were all on a Zoom conference and every single voice was there. And it's something that we haven't actually experienced and we probably wouldn't have unless this happened. Um, right. Well, so I want to uh, wrap up and thank you all for um, sharing your experiences. Um, I know I've learned a lot. Uh, you all all come from various industries um, and have lots of different experiences with this. Um, I do want to end, I want to bring up the slides once more um, to thank you guys um, and get your names up on there. Um, and then also share some things that are coming up very soon. Um, so tonight, as I mentioned, we have a virtual Stammtisch. Uh, so if anyone wants to practice their German, uh, it's at 6 p.m. tonight. 
uh, and you can sign up at meetup.com slash um, And then uh, everyone who's registered for this webinar, uh, and we'll be sending this to our uh, members as well, there's an upcoming webinar next Tuesday um, on what it looks like for uh, after Corona um, and what uh, different ways to rebuild your business. Um, and this is um, something that uh, Mike will be involved with. Um, so we'll be, um, the registration link was a little long, so we'll be sending that out um, rather than having you jot that down right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think you could uh, cut jot that down. That's a fair point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, finally, just want to say thank you once more. Um, this is uh, a webinar brought to you by the German American Chamber of Commerce, Colorado chapter. Um, and you can learn more about us and other events that we're hosting, whether online or in real life in the hopefully near future at GACCCO.org. So thank you so much you. and uh, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you for everybody. Having us. everybody.